This video will discuss the mathematical concept of Maxwell relations and the origin of where Maxwell relations come from. The next video will be a summary of Maxwell relations for all of our thermodynamic energy functions and then the previous and then the following video will be an example of how to use them. All right, so let's say we have a function. This function is a multivariable function. It's a function of two variables, x and y as are many of our thermodynamic functions like internal energy, entropy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, and Gibbs energy. So the total derivative of this function, df, the change in our function when it undergoes, our system undergoes some tiny microscopic change, that's equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x at constant y times dx, the tiny change in x, plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y at constant x times the change in y. So that's a standard kind of expression from calculus 3, from multivariable calculus. All right, what about the second derivative of f with respect to x and y? So this is called a mixed partial derivative. d squared f dx dy is equal to, we take the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at constant x, then we take the derivative of that resulting function with respect to x. So the derivatives are going to act from right to left. The operator is going uh, in order there. Similarly, we have d squared f dy dx, which first we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x at constant y then we take the derivative with respect to y. So another fundamental result of multivariable calculus is that these two mixed partial derivatives, d squared f dy dx, is equal to d squared f dx dy. This, this concept is called the equality of mixed partial derivatives. So as long as the number of total derivatives being taken is equal and the number of times that each variable appears in the bottom are equal, those derivatives are always going to be equal for mathematically well-behaved functions, which these uh, thermodynamic energy functions that we have are typically always going to follow that criteria. Okay, so if we apply this to a specific case of internal energy, the internal energy change during some s small perturbation to our system is the heat plus the work that occurs during that change. The heat in a reversible process being T dS, minus, and then the work being minus P dV. So U is a function of S and V. It's a function of entropy and volume. So the internal energy change is also equal to partial derivative of internal energy with respect to entropy at constant volume times dS plus the constant, the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to volume at constant entropy times the change in volume. So if we take the second derivatives here, d squared u dv ds, that's equal to d dv of du ds. We saw here that du ds is equal to the temperature as you compare the structure of these two equations. We also saw that in our previous video on natural variables. So d squared u dv ds is equal to d dv of t, or dt dv at constant s. All right, similarly, if we take the other order of operations for these derivatives, d squared u ds dv is equal to d ds of du dv at constant s. And du dv, we see here, is minus p. So dds of minus p is minus dp ds at constant v. And through the, equivalent, through the equality of mixed partial derivatives, these two values must be equal to each other all the way through. So what we can say is that the partial derivative of the temperature of a system with respect to the volume of that system at constant entropy is equal to the negative partial derivative of the pressure of the system with respect to the entropy of that system at constant volume. So this type of a relationship here, which comes from the structure of the thermodynamic energy function, is called a Maxwell relation. So each individual thermodynamic energy function is going to have its own Maxwell relation. 
So there will be one for internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, and Gibbs energy. And those will all be summarized in our next video.